Hello everybody, this is Nino and I am inviting you to another episode of what we might call a man alone in the kitchen at midnight. Uh, and it is a special midnight as we are having Saturday night, so what better way is there to celebrate than with a sort of re-implementation of a 1940s style mainframe, but this time on an Arduino 80 tiny 85 board uh, with this here as input, this thermal printer as output, and using the Evo programming language, which I presented a few months ago, in order to compute the integral of a polynomial. And this polynomial, this range, should give us about 1.33. Uh, and thereby demonstrate the capabilities of that language. Evo is a language which I devised for ultra low resources devices. Okay, so in this present implementation, we're having some, yeah, slightly above 250 uh, elements of of instructions and and as many of uh, data memory. The instructions are saved in EEPROM and the data is saved in RAM. So actually, if anything happens and, you know, electricity is off or anything, your program will be saved, your data won't, but it is usually the data which is mutable. So yeah, that's not going to be that much of a deal. And we will basically just let here an evil program run, compute the polynomial and see, look at the result. For this purpose, I devised this keyboard because you see, for data entry into Evo, you need to enter, oh, basically the numbers, you know, and if you give it a few buttons extra, you, you will be able to come by with a, say, like a dozen button keyboard. You unfortunately don't have as many buttons on the 80 tiny 85 itself. Uh, no, I mean, no, not enough pins. You're having six pins and in reality only five because one of them is the reset pin and from the five pins you need to subtract one for the uh, data channel to the printer all right so what did i do i was left with four pins and i was thinking oh that's not a big tragedy because two to the fourth is 16 and i should be able to devise a keyboard which ultimately connects to you know just four pins uh which which i successfully actually did uh one of them is ground you know so actually it's just four four data pins uh by basically saying which combinations of pins shall be shall be triggered and and i did that and i used here leds as diodes and and you can actually construct such a keyboard basically letting different combinations uh, of uh, wires being triggered by just one push button, right? So you actually can thereby implement up to 15 buttons. Here I have 14 because I really didn't need more than more than 14 for Evo. But well, the trouble was my self-constructed keyboard, as awesome as it looks, <laughs> uh, is unusable in this experiment because it needs internal pull-up resistors and these seem not to be well, not to be properly implemented in the 80 tiny 85. Anyway, I was then deciding, look, I'm, I'm not going to go through this again and see what's up, who knows where. I'm going to keep things simple. And I made a four key keyboard uh, where you have to press two keys one after the other in order to trigger something. Uh, like for instance, when you press A, B, this is going to be taken as a one. If you press BA, that's going to mean two and so forth. And that way you can actually express all the numbers. You can express enter, which will be just CD. You can express uh, negativity, like you can <laughs> express negativity, come on. Uh, no, I mean, you can turn a number into a, uh, into a negative number by uh, pressing DC and, and you can correct uh, your input. And that way you can actually communicate with the 80 tiny 85 and enter whatever you have to enter. And in case you're curious, yes, I did indeed 
write the entire program with this thing and with that as output. We will not go through that at full length. Instead, we shall merely trigger the program itself. It starts at uh, instruction address 21, and we shall trigger it by entering a jump uh, to, to instruction address 21 and let it do its thing. While it computes, it is going to be printing out here its programming steps. This is not strictly necessary, but it's fun to watch. And for the pedagogical value of this thing, it might be actually more interesting. The other thing is this, you don't have any other uh, display or examination device other than this printer. So you might be curious, uh, does your program actually work as expected? Did it enter an infinite loop or something? So that property of printing while it works turned useful, though obviously it limits the computation speed. But remember again, it's the late 40s or the early 50s. So yeah, computers are not fast. Now, without further ado, let's trigger the thing. Yeah? So we enter upper operand zero, like command zero, which will be a db, db, cd for enter. Hey, are you there? Are you working? Huh? Okay, I'm just going to press a few CDs just to let it uh, show me. Does it do anything? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, printer is working. You can see it here. And uh, you can also see what is happening when I'm pressing the buttons. Uh, there are the, three, the, the positions X and Y. Uh, this is like first and second button pressed, and it is going to count there which buttons are pressed. CD means enter, and enter without anything really means uh, just enter zero. I have entered now two commands of zero, 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 you know, which means do nothing. And you can do that when you have lost yourself a little bit and you want to regain a sane state. We have done so. So again, without further ado, db cd yeah we have entered now a zero it's not visible here but that doesn't bother us i could always press out the paper and you know look at it uh, a one which is an a b c d this means jump so immediate operation jump if uh, the data register zero is zero which it always is this is a specificity of evil uh, so the next is again the B for zero and C D enter. So zero one zero and then we are jumping at instruction uh, twenty one. Twenty one is two one. So uh, B A A B and again enter with C D. Now it should start to compute and it does. Very strange. Well, that doesn't look good. All right. It does look like something went wrong because this is just uh, it terminated immediately without looping. And I'll have to see where exactly did it mess it up. See you in a second if I can say so. All right. It apparently somehow didn't have data. I must have turned off electricity. Let's try again and start. Uh, that's a lot better. Basically, each time it makes a tick, it has executed two operations and printed both of them here. And each one of them is showing you four numbers being, uh, uh, for instance, here, let's say this one, 32 is the, up, the operand address, 12 is the operand, and this is the first data address, and this is the second data address. address. So. This way, you can see exactly what it is doing. 
and on the data address one in the end we shall be having our result as you can see it does use quite a lot of paper <laughs> Yep, I am going to let it run all the way. <laughs> but you know, historically, this is even fast because each one of those ticks takes like a quarter of a second. But in reality, machines of that time not really took several seconds. To, to add numbers even and even longer in order to multiply them so the only unrealistic thing about the setup is how how fast it is you know <laughs> yeah keep people looking at the thermal printer uh, <laughs> well, I hope you're enjoying this. I have to admit, I do. And I can't wait for the moment to, you know, bring it along somewhere when somebody tells me to, to take my computer with me, you know, and then I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm having here this, this 80 tiny 85 type machine. Uh, are you still awake? What are you doing here? Everything okay with you, buddy? This is a little weird, huh? That did you just end? Yeah, you just ended. Okay. Uh, I should have ended differently, though. Hmm. I think it's time to print all the instructions, which I believe was with the command minus one. I believe. Let's check. Yeah, minus one list the instructions so a b for one d c for negative c d for entering it so this is our uh, instruction memory yeah we're having here up to 251 instructions right uh, and the area we're actually using is just here in the beginning. Let me let me just quickly check whether this corresponds to what we should be seeing. Twenty. All right, I'll have to admit it looks pretty correct. So now let's look perhaps just simply at the data, which would be minus two, which means here B A for two. D, C for minus, and C, D for enter. It has nuked all its data. Okay. <laughs> okay, I guess I know what's happening. Uh, what I believe it is doing is that if it is using too much power over the printer, it is actually nuking the power of the microcontroller because I don't have a very powerful power supply. So let's get an auxiliary battery and do the whole thing again. And let's hope this time it will compute till the end correctly. Okay, so I'm trying this again. Uh, we have created here a little bit of a paper heap. Uh, <laughs> and this thing is trotting along, computing. Hopefully, this time surviving things is here as a 9 volt battery, which I'll show you in a moment. Here it goes. So that's the 9 volt battery in order to prevent the brownout of the microcontroller board. And you can very nicely actually see here the the looping as the numbers uh, increase and then decrease again so you can see that it is uh, going between going between instruction addresses i know what you're asking yourself how am i making sure this is not going to loop forever well obviously i cheated 
in so far as this is a program which I have run already uh, in the other versions and therefore I know that if everything goes properly it should terminate eventually but if one didn't know one wouldn't have any way to find out except to experiment you see I think it's a really nice demonstration of uh, the halting problem which means uh, which is a famous uh, problem as described by Turing according to which if you don't know what the source code of a pro program does you cannot actually accurately predict its behavior neither its runtime nor its mistakes basically they wanted to know uh, can you somehow estimate what sort of computing time a program which we haven't looked into uh, will use and Turing essentially describes you cannot because to put it in a simple way if I press one and it blinks once and I press two twice and it bling, blinks two times and I press uh, some button three times and it blinks thrice uh, you cannot predict what will happen when you press the button four times maybe it will blink 400 times maybe it will blink again just once so from the outside you cannot accurately observe the inner workings of any program this by the way has a direct consequence that testing software is only an endeavor uh, which can be done in good faith done according to certain statistical measures but without having analyzed every bit of its source code uh, it is not possible theoretically not just in practice but not even theoretically to say for instance that it is bug free and while well, we're all watching this and hoping that it will stop eventually uh, <laughs> we have no certainty because you don't know what is um, in the microcontroller and to be quite frank uh, by now i'm not quite sure myself anymore i just hope it will terminate hope it will terminate before it has used the entire paper roll uh, there's no guarantee for that either we are facing the ending of it because it now started to print its free positions in other words uh, this is where there are no instructions hence the zeros as opposed to before when it was still uh, using actual instructions so now it will just print out its empty instruction space excellent and we should because i think that this red marking means we're running out of um running out of paper okay so we shall now print simply its data space and see that uh, whether there's the result we desire which should be simply minus two that is b a for two uh d c for minus c d for enter oh excellent and there we have our result specifically specifically we're having it here see this 132 the last two places of any number are the decimal places so this is uh, 1.32 the correct result should have been 1.33 but given what a poor thing it is uh, <laughs> 1.32 is good enough so yeah we have integrated uh, our our polynomial in the desired range we have received its uh, correct result uh, you see here how entry of the data works uh, very well once again with like first position x uh, like b a this is like giving you a two uh, d c making it minus c d entering it and telling us that it was a minus two giving us the result and yeah that's all for this video in case you are curious what amount of paper we produced let me show it to you so yeah that said i believe that's a good ending for this video thank you for joining in and yeah see you next time <laughs> bye bye